I, I am impregnated with this word today. And I ask you to pray for my strength and help me push for a safe and speedy delivery. For some reason that I am not able to define or explain this statement that Jesus made that I made mention of and put a little bit of emphasis in our Bible study on Tuesday night has resonated in my mind all through the week. In the middle of Jesus' prayer in John 17, he said to the Father, The people who you have given to me, I have given them thy word. I want you to pray for me today. I don't know if it will mean as much to you as it means to me. But I'm still trying to digest what Jesus said to his father concerning his disciples that should have been conveyed to the rest of us. In his prayer, Jesus said, I pray not for these only, but I pray for everyone. Everyone who would hear of me through their word. The Logos, and I don't know where the Lord is leading with this today, but the Logos, I want you to just hold that thought in your spirit. I have given them thy word. The logo speaks of whatever is said, including the thought. I have given them the reasoning of your motive. As a matter of fact, by divine expression, this word is Christ. So then by extent, Jesus was saying to the father, I have given them me. Help me. I have given them of myself. I am the word. John started out his epistle with these words. In the beginning was the word. Christ in his pre-existent form. And the word was with God. And by the way, that same word was God. In verse 14, John, John continued to say, and the word became flesh. Are you with me here? And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Because of the extensiveness of the use of this word and the varying particles in it, Jesus was also saying, 
I gave them myself. In verse 6 he said, I have manifested thy name unto the men whom thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were and thou gavest them me. And they have received and they have kept thy word. In verse 8 he said, For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. But anybody here can say, Lord Jesus, I receive it. I receive your word. I receive you. And I've known surely that I came from thee. And they have believed that thou hast sent me. And now, Father, I am also giving them the power of a thorny. To be my voice when I am gone. I'm giving you, I'm, I've given them your word and. They have grown to understand who you are, who we are, your promises, and their destiny, and they will be my ambassadors. I have given them your word. Back in verse 14. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. What does that mean? It suggests to me that the word we receive from Jesus is a transforming experience. To become a disciple, to be fully influenced by a mentor. To take on his or her character. To conduct oneself in the same manner. The world hated them because they became different. Come on with me here. Whew. Hallelujah. The world hated them because their language changed. The world hated them because their conduct changed. The world hated them because their lifestyle changed. The world hated them because they now are able to see the evil that exists in the world. And they are a voice to condemn evil when they see it. I have given them your word and they have received it and they are representing me in the world. They have become my voice. And the world hated them. Hallelujah. God help us. Luke tells us in Acts 4 13 when they saw and these, my friends, are, weren't generally eloquent, noble men. They weren't high and noble scholars. As a matter of fact, the only great scholar we, well, we know Luke was a physician. And we know some of them had a certain level of background. But not on the broader scope of who they were. We know of one scholarly student when it comes to religiosity or religions that was way down in the road after Jesus was already ascended back into heaven. When Paul, Saul came on the scene who was brought up at the feet of Gamaliel. Way down the road before the noble came. But my friends, something is notable when you become a follower of Jesus Christ. Something is recognizable when you have been discipled by Jesus Christ. Something is recognizable when when you have taken on Jesus Christ's character. There's something different about you. You may not know the sciences. 
You might not be aware of biology and psychology. You may not fully understand human behavior. You may not understand philosophy. But you can know something about destiny. You can know something about the plan of redemption. Hallelujah. You can know something about what God did. Who he is from everlasting to everlasting is God. You can talk about his goodness, his mercy and grace. You can talk about redemption. Whew. I have given them your word. That is sticking in my spirit. I have given them thy word in Luke. As we said back in 14, I have given them thy word, and the world hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am, even as I am not of the world. They are in it, but they are not of it. The world no longer dictates their conduct. The word no longer approves their behavior. Hallelujah. The world hated them because they saw me in them. It saw me in them. Amen somebody? Yes Lord. Luke tells us in 14, 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Come on with me here. <laughs> the ignorant. The unlearned. Come on with me somebody. Those who have not a, a, a diploma. To show that they have been to prestigious university. But when they stand up to speak about the goodness of God. When they stand up to speak about redemption story. When they stand up to talk about the goodness of God. When they stand up to talk about destiny by way of redemption come on with me somebody when they begin to talk about how Jesus saved when they begin to waft it on the rolling tide how Jesus saved the unlearned men are now recognized that they have been with Jesus I have given them thy word when you receive the word the living word, the life changing source, the quickening power. Something must change. Something must change. Jesus says the word that I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life in John 6.63. There is something uniquely special about you when you receive the word. Amen, somebody. When you receive the word. What is the word? Who is the word? There is something uniquely different about you when you receive the word who is Jesus Christ. In his life-giving force, it is Jesus Christ you receive. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. In a study of the term grace, it, it points back to Jesus Christ himself being the very grace of God. He is the one who brings salvation. He's the one who appears to you. He's the one who calls you. So when we talk about the grace of God and we try to figure what that grace is, all we got to do is culminate it in Jesus Christ being the very grace of God. And the Bible tells us we can come boldly to the throne of grace because Jesus sits on the throne willing to forgive, willing to restore, willing to, re to redeem, willing to revive, willing to set free. Ooh. 
there is something uniquely special about you when you receive the word. And then Jesus said, Father, I have given them thy word. I have poured off myself into them. And as a result, they look like me. They sound like me. Hallelujah. And because of that, the world hates them. Just like it hated me. Are you, are you worried because you're hated? Are you worried because the world can tolerate you? Are you worried because you're not accepted? Your difference is not welcome? Are you worried that even your friends turn their backs on you? Now that you have accepted the word who is Jesus Christ. Are you, are you worried because you are being tempted? Are you worried because once you receive Jesus Christ, you become a prime target of the devil? Because when the devil looks at you walking around, you know what he sees? He sees an adversary. You know why? And I thought of that not the first time, but I thought of that. When you walk around and say you are Christians. Are there any Christians in the house? Is there any Christian in the house? As a matter of fact, because you have received the word. And because the word has transformed you. And because you have become new by the live word that you have received, guess what you have become? You have become Christians. You know that, right? Oh, we, we call it Christians. Let's say Christian. I am a Jamaican. And they are Americans. And Australians. Come on with me somebody. Are you here with me? And so you being in Christ. When you become a citizen. The Bible said let your, your, your conversation. Uh, when you read. You know reading words in the Bible. They don't just mean what they look like. In English dictionaries. Um, definition. The Bible, when the Bible said that your conversation is in heaven, it says your citizenship. That word conversation in the Greek means citizenship. So because you are Christians, redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, accept the new life, and now have been restored to communion with God. Now that you are heirs of God and joined heirs with Jesus Christ, it makes you legitimately a citizen in heaven. So, walk with your head up high. Never be embarrassed to be called Christians. You are Christians. Oh, you should feel good about that. And to me who am less than the least of all saints. And to me who had no, 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 no table background coming from nowhere. Now I, I can stand up and boldly say, I have a citizenship in heaven. That cannot be revoked. Under no circumstance. Amen somebody. Uh, cannot be rejected. Cannot be. I can't be deported. Can I talk to somebody here? I, I can't be turned out. Of heaven. I have given them. Your word. Every piece of tool they need. And I want you to receive this brothers and sisters. In that word that Jesus has given us. Every piece of tool they need to resist the devil. I have told them how to use them. Come on with me somebody. Everything they need in every moment of their lives. I have given them your word. 
have given them word for distress. I've given them word for brokenness. I've given them a word for temptation. I've given them a word for, for, for when they are in struggles. I give them a word when they are weak. I give them a word when they are lonely. Come on with me, somebody. I give them a word when they are helpless. I give them a word when they fall short of material things. I've given them a word. I've given them hope. Oh, somebody help me here. I have given them your word. Shaka satalabahala. We have overcome by the word of God and our testimony. The devil is no match for you when you are equipped with the word that Jesus has given you. I have spoken these things to them. I have told them. I have told them. That when they are in the world, they're going to have problems. I have told them the world not going to love them. I have told them, Father, not to worry about the man who can only destroy the body but can't do anything more. He can't destroy the soul. I have told them, rather, fear the one who can destroy both body and soul and cast them into hell. I have told them, Lord, that they're going to be riding in the storms of life. But I told them that I will give them peace in the midst of their storm. I have told them life will not get better because they begin to follow me. I have told all them not to be discouraged. Oh, somebody help me here. When the, when the heart takes and the grief, when the devil comes at them, I have told them to expect it. I have given them your word. Woo. I have given them your word. Everything they need to resist the devil, I have given to them. I have spoken these things that in me they might have peace. Come on with me somebody. When your storm is raging. When the world gets angry. When the world gets bitter. When the world loses its calm. When the world becomes unfriendly. Jesus said in me you will have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But he said don't let that derail you. Can I talk to somebody here? Don't let that derail you. Because I have overcome the world. I have faced everything that you are facing and some. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that Jesus was tempted in the same manner that we are yet without sin. The Bible tells us that when he was reviled, he reviled not again. But he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Jesus said, I have given them your word. That when the storm of life are raging, they will know that you are still there in the midst of their storm. I have given them your word. That they are more. Oh, somebody help me here. I have given them your word. That they are more than conquerors. To you who love them. I have given them your word. Woo. I have given you. Given them. Your word. Given them your word. However, I've also told them that in the world they will struggle, but they should be of good cheer. Turn to somebody and tell them, cheer up. Come on, tell somebody, cheer up. Come on, tell somebody, cheer up. Don't get down, cheer up. Don't lose focus. Cheer up. Don't get distracted. Cheer up. <laughs> Use your tools to encourage yourself. Don't let the devil get a hint that you are becoming discouraged. Come on with me, somebody. Don't let the devil get a hint that you're losing focus. Don't let the devil get a hint that you're misusing or not using what God has given to you. They 
They are yours. Turn to them. Lord, help me. Next. Next, Jesus says. Father. I have equipped them. I have been... I have built them up. I have prepared them for battle. Next, Father, because they are equipped, because I have modeled a lifestyle, because I have showed them what it is to overcome, to fight, Father, do not take them out of the world. Tell somebody, I'm equipped to stay. Come on, I'm equipped to stay. I'm equipped to fight. I'm equipped to win. Hallelujah. Father, do not take them out of the world. The world needs them. Come on with me, somebody. The world needs you. You need to value yourself. You're not underprivileged. Hallelujah. You're not among the least. Come on with me, somebody. You're among the most important in the world. Come on with me here. They are, hallelujah. Don't take them out of the world, Father. They are the salt and the light of the world. Don't take them out. If the world is going to survive, the world needs them. I have given them your word. I have given them your word. They must keep the world from putrefaction. They are needed to preserve the world from decay. They are the light of the world, not one of the lights. But the light. You don't need backup battery. Or backup generator. To keep your light shining. Uh, uh, every now and then. Uh, we get messages from Con Edison. If your power goes out. Call this number. We'll be there as soon as possible to restore your power. But my friend, let me declare to you today. When Candace, when Candace's power source goes out. In the stillness and the blackness of the midnight. You are still shining in your dark place. Because the light that you have from the light of the world. Comes from Jesus Christ who indwells you. He is the light of the world. And I have deposited myself in them. Come on somebody. And because I have deposited myself in them. Even in the dark places of the world. They are still the light of the world. And they are a light that shine in the dark place. They are the city that set on a hill that cannot be hid. And he said let your light be sh shine among men. That they may see your good work. And come to glorify your father in heaven. Even in the blackness of the midnight you're a city on a hill shine for somebody to see the writer said let your lower lights be burning send the gleam across the way some poor fainting struggling seaman you may rescue you may save you can't hide your candle you can't put it under the bushel you are the light of the world take your candle Take your candle. Go light your world. Don't take them out of the world, Father. If you take them out, the world is going to collapse too soon. Listen. When we leave, it's chaos. 
I want you to know that. I've been trying to encourage you to value yourselves. Value your importance in the world. Value how Christ values you. Put a high price on yourself. You're not in a wholesale market. You're precious. You're precious stones. You're highly priced. You're valued in heaven. You walk around with Jesus in you. You're priceless. <laughs> You're not found in old seal boxes. And you're going to some store cheap things and worn things and beat up things and things that have been thrown around on the floor and lose their tag value. Put them in a wholesale basket. Everybody come, everybody come finger, finger, finger. Watching the whole steel basket. But when you look at precious things, you have to call the tender to come with the key to open the showcase. Are you with me, somebody? Do you know how valuable you are just being a child of God? Jesus said, I have given them your word. I've deposited myself in them. Don't take them out, like this statement. Don't take them out, but immune them. Immune them. I remember growing up in Jamaica. And if you grew up in Jamaica, in the country, you can, you, can, you can attest to this. I remember seeing fowls when rain set or after a shower rain come out when the sun shines up again and they get into the oil pan, we call it, and they draw oil and they oil their feathers. They oil their feathers. You know what that's for? They oil their feathers. The next time rain fall, it just run off. They're kind of taking their... What, what, what term I can I use now? It's like they are getting their vaccine. Are getting their vaccination so they can protect themselves from diseases. Jesus is saying, don't take them out of the world, Father, but protect them. Immune them from the contamination of the world. Don't take them out, but protect them from the germs that infests the world. And then he said, sanctify them through your truth. I'm still in John 17. Sanctify them through your truth because your word is truth. Just like how, and, and I like what Jesus, Jesus said, just like how you send me into the world, Father, I am sending them into the world. And he says, and for their sakes, watch what Jesus said, I pour me into them. You wouldn't think Jesus needed to, need to sanctify himself, right? But Jesus said, for their sakes, I sanctify myself. That they also may be sanctified. I have shown them the example what it means to be consecrated. I've shown them what it means not to be affected by their surrounding. I've shown them what it means not to let what the world say about them impact them. In other words, don't let the world impact them, but let them impact the world. Come and talk to somebody here. I'm giving them the power of attorney. 
I'm giving them the authority to use my word. Everything that you have said to me. I'm giving it to their disposal. That they will use it to defend the kingdom. To defend themselves. And to establish who we are. I have shown them by example what it means to be consecrated and set apart. That's what the word sanctify means. It means to be cleansed. It means to be consecrated. It means to be set apart. And Jesus said, I set myself apart. I consecrate myself and I showed them how to do it. I have given them my word. I have given them that your word. I have taught them how to love one another. Follow me. I'm closing soon. I've given them your word. I have taught them how to love one another. I have taught them how to be patient and kind. I have taught them how to love their enemies. Hello, somebody. I have taught them how to bless them that curse them. Oh. I have given them your word. I have taught them how to bless them that curse them. I have given them your word. I have taught them not to think of themselves more highly than they ought to think. I have taught them that righteousness exalts a nation. Come on with me, somebody. But sin is a reproach to every people. I have taught them that humility will take them to places. Come on with me, somebody. Shaka Hallelujah. I have taught them not to respect the noble and reject the lowly. I have taught them, I have given them your word I have told them everyone is the same value in your presence I have told them none is more worthy than the other I have told them that all have sinned and come short of God's glory but also that redeeming grace is available to all just from one atonement on the cross hallelujah hallelujah I have given them your word. I can't get rid of that. I have given them your word. I have given that which is, is enough to shape them and make them ready. I have given them that which is important to make them ready for your return. I have given them, hallelujah, that which they need to be upright. I have given your word. I have taught them that. It will require childlikeness to inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, humility. Willingness to be guided. Submission to be led. Come on with me, somebody. And Jesus said, unless you become like a little child, you cannot enter, inherit the kingdom of God. That means you can't have your own will. You can't just want things your way. It got to be God's way. It got to be guided and ordered. Your steps must be ordered by the Lord. You can't dress yourself. Go where you want to do what you want to. That's not the order that God established. You must walk in his word. I have taught them not to judge one another. Come on with me somebody. I have taught them that judgment belongs to God. I have taught them not to take vengeance, not to revenge. I have taught them that vengeance belongs to God and he will repay. Trust him. He might not do it when you want him. But he'll be on time if it's needed. You don't know what's right. Don't get yourself in trouble because you're in a hurry. Tell somebody, leave it to him. 
Leave it to him. He will repay in his time. You don't have to go back and ask God, Oh Lord, how long are you going to make she go on? You don't have to say, Lord, when are you going to stop him? God's timing is perfect. He's looking out for you. I have taught them, Father, not to judge one another. I have taught them to be peacemakers. Do you hear what the Bible is saying? I've given them your word. All these are in God's word. I have taught them how to be peacemakers. Come on with me, somebody. I have taught them, I have taught them the, 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 the reciprocal power of forgiveness. Let me say that again. I have taught them the reciprocal power of forgiveness. I have taught them that if they want to be forgiven, they must first forgive. I have told them they can't have a swelling heart of hate and malice and come to me for mercy. I have told them they got to forgive first. And then come to me with a clean heart. Release others. Then come to me so I can release you. I have taught them how not to cherish evil. Oh God, I have given them your word. I can't get rid of that. I have taught them that they cannot receive forgiveness if they have not forgiven others. I have given them your word. I have taught them how to sacrifice, how the sacrifice in my blood has obtained eternal redemption for them. I have given them thy word that they are no more aliens. They are no more strangers. There are no more foreigners far from the commonwealth of Israel. There are no more strangers. But now they are hearers of God. And joint hearers with me. I have given them thy word. I have given them thy word. I told them that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy. To be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in them when this moment is past. I told them that my sheep hear my voice. And I know them. I know my sheep. I know my sheep. And my sheep know me. When my sheep hear my voice, they know it. They don't listen to every voice that they hear. They don't run to every call that is made. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. And he said, and they shall never perish. And I want you to get this. No matter how hard the devil comes at them, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. I have given them thy word. I have given them. Father, I have also told them that they are no longer considered servants. But they are considered friends. I call them friends because everything that you have told me. I pass it on to them. They are no servants. Under the stigma of slavery. Slave has no rights. Slave has no voice. 
slave has no seat at the table. But friends do. Slaves don't sit into reasoning conversation. Slaves don't sit to analyze. But I've called them friends. Because I sit with them at the table and I've poured out of me into them everything that you have poured into me. And I'm just about done. I have given them the word. I have told them I am their present help in their time of trouble. I told them to call me when they need me in the midnight hour. I told them I never sleep and I never slumber. I told them before they ask, I'm hearing. And while they're asking, the answer is coming. I told them Hallelujah. I told them that I am Jehovah Rapha. I told them I am their healer. By my stripes. They're healed. I told them. That I am touched with the feelings. Of their infirmities. I told them I was wounded. For their transgressions. Bruised. For their iniquities. The chastisement of their peace. Was upon me. And with my stripes. They are healed. I am their Jehovah. Rapha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've given them your word. And they have received it. They have accepted that your word is true. And I've told it to them. I told them in their time of need. When they don't know what to do. Where to turn. I told them I am their Jehovah Jireh. Shaka I told them I am their provider. And as a result, David received it. And David declared, I was young. And now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Now his seed begging bread. I am there, Jehovah Jireh. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. I've given them your word. I've given them your word. I've given them your word. And David said, I received that word. And I hide them in my heart. When I need them. I will not sin against my father. When I need them, I will not become discouraged. When I need them, I will not become despondent. When things rise up against me, I will not lose my cool. Come on, somebody. Can I talk to somebody here? I hide them in my heart that when I feel it, like I'm down in my spirit, oh, that I find a psalm, I find a hymn, I find a spiritual song. The Holy Spirit speak back to me. I hide them in my heart. I hide them in a quiet place. I hide them in a secure place. I hide them with equal access. Come on somebody. I hide them in my heart so I can draw from them when I need them. And when I feel like the burden is getting too heavy. I draw from your word and said, we are, I am more than conqueror through you who love me. 
Because that's what your word tells me. Yes, Lord. I've given them your word. I've given them your word. I told them that I am Jehovah Rocky. I told them that I am their shepherd. I am the one who look out for green pastors. I am the one who bring them to still waters. I am the one who set the table. Oh, somebody help me here. Oh, glory to God. I am the restorer. Oh, somebody help me here. Oh, I am Jehovah Rohi. I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. I have given them your word. Come on, tell yourself, I have enough to survive. Come on, tell yourself, I have enough to keep going. Come on, tell yourself, I have enough to stand up strong. I have enough to overcome. I have enough to fight against the enemy. I have enough power. I have, oh, somebody help me here. I have, oh, somebody help me here. I have enough in my heart. Oh, somebody, I have given them your word. Oh, somebody call them. Woo. Mama Makosha Talabahanda. Ay, 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 ay. I have enough at my disposal. I hide them in my heart. Hallelujah. And that which I forget, the Holy Ghost will bring them back to my remembrance. Oh, somebody help me here. I have given them your word. I have given them your word. When their hearts are down, when they are discouraged, I have given them your word. The Holy Ghost will comfort them. The Holy Ghost will console them. He will bring back to memory and he will teach them what's necessary. I've given them. I have enough at my disposal. Shakatatalabahanda. I have given them your word. I've given them. I have given them your word. Come on, tell yourself, Lord, I am not weak. I am not feeble. Come on, tell yourself. I am not helpless. I have power. Come on, tell yourself. I have authority. <laughs> I have strength. Because in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. Can I talk to somebody? I have given them your word. I have told them that my grace. I have told them that my grace is sufficient for them. Because in my strength, they are their weakness. They are made strong. I have given them your word. I have told them to identify who is the enemy. I have told them we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't fight each other. We don't build strife against each other. I told them that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I told them that we've wrestled not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And I have given them your word to use in the moment when, they, when the principalities are coming. I've told them how to equip themselves. I've given them your word how to arm themselves. I've given them your word how to arm themselves. I given them your word how to put on defensive armors and how to use offensive weapon. I have given them your word. I have given them your word. I told them that I am Jehovah Shalom. When everything is falling apart against around them, I told them I bring them peace. When the world targets them from every angle, I am Jehovah Shalom. I told them I am Jehovah Saboath. I told them I am Jehovah Sabaoth. 
I am the Lord of hosts. I told them then with hosts, when the hosts of hell rise up against them. Come on with me, somebody. Can I talk to somebody here? Woo! I told them when hosts rise up against them, the Lord of hosts is with them. I am Jehovah Sabbath. I am the Lord of hosts. I am the one man army. When I speak, I destroy hosts. You might be sleeping when hosts of hell are coming against you. But I never sleep. Come on with me somebody. Uh, can I talk to somebody here? Oh you may be resting in the midnight hour. When the hosts of hell coming against you. But I am the Lord of hosts. I never sleep nor I slumber. Oh somebody help me here. I told them don't run their blood pressure up. I told them the battle is the Lord's. I told them they will hold their peace. And I will fight their battles. So come on, Satana Bahanda. Oh, somebody help me here. I've given oh, somebody help me here. I've given them your word. I have told them what they can't see, I can see. I told them what they can't handle, I can handle. <laughs> yes, I told them I am Elroy. I am Elroy. I see everything in the darkness. Even the devil tried to disguise it. I am Elroy. I see them. Everything is open before my eyes. And I am, I am omniscient. I see in the dark. No plot, no ploy, no derricks, no craftiness, no cunningness. The devil can't hide. Everything is open before my eyes. If the devil spread his bed in hell, I see it. I am Elroy. I see everything. I am El Shaddai. I am the God of the mountains. But I am also the God in the valley. <laughs> and the blood that gives me strength from day to day will never lose its power because it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. I have given them your word. Come on with me somebody. I've given them your word. I've given them your word. I've given them your word. I have given them your word. I've given them your word. I'm done. I'm done. I've given them thy word. And this is for me. This line is for me. When it's over, for me. This is what I want to say with all conviction and gratification. That every church that you have allowed me to pastor, since I was a church leader from 1980 
until I became a pastor in 1988. And for the six churches that were under my leadership, this being the sixth one, every last one, when I, when I come to the end of my days, I want to say, for all of my ministry, I have done everything to make sure I give them your word. I hide nothing from the word of God that he unveils to me and I hope you recognize that. I never stand behind the podium to, for my glory. I never stand behind a podium to be exalted. But I work hard day and night, long years. In school and university and institute and, and homework. So that I can give you God's word. 